Yo, yo, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's going on, man? What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day today. So, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be the last. Let me know if the volume's okay. Everything's good. I have to get a new pop filter tomorrow and change some settings on the mic because other pop filters, I gotta throw it out. It's like been overly used. <laughs> Uh, I hope everyone's doing good today. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the last. Um, this is going to be the last stream for free agency. I mean, really, we've kind of been done the last couple days, but um, starting tomorrow, it's going to be nothing but draft. I mean, we can talk whatever; it doesn't matter. I mean, no, what what changes is I guess the stream, the streams, the names of the, nothing much else. Um, you know what I mean? So we'll start our draft on the road, the road to the draft tomorrow. And um, we'll probably stream every day. We'll hear more rumors, more news, more little it's and bits of stuff coming out uh, for you guys. And um, we'll just react by the time being. I know it's a bit, been a little bit slow lately. It's just that time where everybody's either, um, you know, kind of, being a week before the draft, so everybody's kind of doing their thing right now. Uh, but uh, nothing's stopping here, though, because we're going to keep this thing moving, keep this thing going. Me and, Phil, me and Philly will have... Um, until, uh, we'll, we'll, wait till, we'll wait till we get more people, in, but I'll tell you now anyway. Um, me and uh, Philly 500 um, have a little surprise for you guys for the draft. Um, so, can't say what it is yet, but... Uh, something that we haven't done yet together and him working together as something else and um you know, hope you guys will like it and love it and um that's where we'll be at by the time being you know so i think we'll be all right i think we'll be all right let me just make sure this is working okay i want to say hey what's up everybody in the chat what's going on ken what's going on man I know, I was late. I was late a couple. So yeah, we're gonna do like a strict that we're gonna do like a I don't know like um at least an hour, um today. I the last two days have been so bad. I've been all over the place. You know how just things just keep happening. You know, get busy and happen. I I mean um you're uh, by the way uh whoever is a member um there will be two membership videos out tomorrow. I missed membership video today. I was just really busy like yesterday i was just a mess and kind of crazy who's just show what's going on yo yo what's up everyone hope you're having a great day what's going on man Larry says cut bradbury sign simmons well that makes well yeah sure but i mean they're not cutting bradbury it ain't happening you think it's gonna happen it ain't happening it, it's it's too late in the process though they're they're if they were to move on from bradbury and that was the case there has been rumors that they're not moving him because of the ten and a half million dollars he's owed to this year, but I don't believe that for shit because that's an easy contract to get out of. You know? Fifty Loro says hello from Moscow, Idaho, dude. That's awesome, man. I've never been to Idaho. I hope the potatoes are good there though. Right? Are potatoes made in Idaho? I buy Idaho potatoes, so I got to know where it's coming from. You know what I mean? Logi so Griffiths, I'm a big fan of the Eagles. 24th season, better Eagles, new edge linebacker, draft Georgia and Alabama. Georgia and Alabama is, you know, I, we'll see. We'll see. Cash says, hello from Orem, Utah. Utah, huh? Think of hearing Sean Simmons. He doesn't want to play here. I, I think I think Justin Simmons is going to be a post draft signing. I think he's gonna wait it out till these draft, you know, th these these you know teams get their draft situations kind of uh, you know set up and where he can get a starting job. So, Rex says, "What up? What's going on, Shrek Smith? What's going on, man?" Harris says, "The potatoes are my, uh, mid in Idaho. I've been there. I know. Oh, damn." I buy them all the time. The baked potatoes in the summertime. Also, great, great. So there was some rumors today that which I'm gonna have in a video tomorrow, but I'm gonna be more, you know, it's gonna be a longer video tomorrow. So, 
Um, there has been rumors of the Eagles trading up in this draft now. Chad Forbes, that I do follow on Twitter, he's actually pretty good with his news. Um, he does a lot of the Chad Forbes does a lot of the rumors regarding um, trade ups, trade backs, specific players that the team might be interested in. Um, but it's all rumors, speculation. But he has some inside people that he definitely um, you know takes a lot of credit for. A lot of rumors with the 16th overall pick regarding Seattle Seahawks that they are willing to trade back. It looks like the Commanders, the Packers, and the Philadelphia Eagles that are very interested to trade up. Okay, now even if you trade up to 16, okay. Now, the, now look, before we even get into that, the Bills at 28 want to trade on a trade up, so. There, there's still there, there. Apparently, the Bills are gonna get a receiver in the first round, I and mean, they're gonna have to at this point because they already lost. You know, they already lost Stephon Diggs, and I think that was a big. I think that was a big mistake. But I don't blame Stephon Diggs because unfortunately, the Achilles heel right now is being the Chiefs. Unfortunately, they can't do that. You know, so it's gonna be interesting. Um. I feel good going to this draft, but I feel like it's just such a mystery at this point. So I think the only way they really trade back in this draft is if, if they want to trade back to 28 and feel like Cooper is going to be there. I, I swear, like, it's... My mind is saying two names right now. If it's a trade up to 16 from where we're at at 22, okay? I feel like it's going to be... uh. Jackson Powers Johnson. I'm I'm sorry, but and not even like I'm sorry. I I really like I really would love that pick. I I'm more open to it every day because I feel like yes, like he a defensive guy. There's no doubt. But I think corners off the table. You're you're, dra you're drafting Edgar and Cooper in the second round of this draft. That's who I want in the second round. At least with one of the second rounders, Edgar and Cooper. Like boom, that's who I want in the second round. There's no doubt about it, okay? Not Trotter, not, I don't care who else. Like, I want Ed Green Cooper in the second round. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, okay? But a lot more going on for this team right now. A lot more going on. Darren says, how are you going SCC in the draft for the fourth year in a row? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, we, we never used to draft from SCC. And you know who got involved in that? Jeffrey Lurie got involved in that. Jeffrey Lurie is the one that is the main reason why we haven't been drafting in the SCC. As soon as we started drafting guys and think Landon Dickerson and getting guys from big schools like that, then that's when Howie Rose, you know, Jeffrey Lurie kind of took a back seat. Um, Jeffrey Lurie is the main reason why we had J.J. Ortega Whiteside over Paris Campbell in the second round. That's 100% true. That news came out. Uh, as the skeleton says, hey, Joey, don't watch the NHL Flyers. They are the uh, the Dallas cow jokes. <laughs> I have, I don't I don't really watch hockey that much. I really don't. Um, I try to watch some Phillies games here and there. The Sixers, I haven't even fucking watched. So, lose the show. So, I think we are constructed this. Well, they have to be careful what moves they make going forward. This has got to be a killer draft. Have they made an impact move in free agency? Okay. I think they have made, obviously, three of them. Okay. Saquon Barkley is one. Chauncey Garner-Johnson is another one. And I think the third one that a lot of people are down on, I think it is Devin White. I think Devin White is definitely... Um, Devin White is definitely one of those players that is... Um, I think is is, is going to get... I think one of the biggest strengths of Devin White is going after the... I think that's I, I think you have a legit athletically sound linebacker on this squad going into his prime. That I think Devin White could be that big re-sign candidate. I know you have Zach Bond. I know you have Oren Burks and some of these other guys. They signed three li linebackers for free agency. Great. They sign an all pro. No. But I think Devin White will be the strongest of, of all of them. And I think the Kobe Dean is I mean, I, I don't know if the Kobe Dean's good, bad. I mean, unfortunately, the availability is a is a, a whole other situation. With what's hard to really, I don't want to call Nicobe Dean a bust, or I mean, not even a bust because he's not a first round pick. But I'm saying it just just not the player I thought he was going to be. So, give him more time. 
B, what's going on, man? Aaron says, uh, one rumor I heard that the Philly was trying to trade up to 15 for Quinny Mitchell. Yeah, I, I heard 15, I heard 16. 16 I heard uh, last night. It's interesting. So that says, Shakes, what position or player do you want most Eagles to pick at 22? The direction I'm kind of, like, realistically with this team right now, what I think they will, like, from my opinion of what I think the team is going to do, I think they're going edge rusher or they're going, I think they're going edge rusher or offensive line. I, I, and I, I'm, I'm starting to really think if they move up to 16, I feel like I'm realistically starting to think that it, it might be, okay, it actually might be offensive line. I think the only reason you're in the first round right now is because you're going to draft Jackson Powers Johnson. Because anybody else would be a red shirt at this point. You know what I mean? John says, Jeffrey Lurie needs to keep Howie accountable when it comes to the draft. next. Oh, that's not, dude. I think Lurie has fucked up most of the drafts than Howie has fucked up drafts. Jeffrey Lurie is the one that wouldn't allow Howie to draft from the S the SCC. Like, I think he's the main reason why how like why how does Howie Roseman do a complete fucking one eighty, and all of a sudden the last few years has been his drafts have been okay they've been pretty damn good. Okay, that like no 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 GM turns that turns that much within a few within a year. Okay. I think a lot of it was Howie more than I think a lot of it was Jeffrey Lurie more than Howie Roseman, and it is one hundred percent true. The Jay Jarrett thing, a Whiteside pick, was not even Howie's pick. It wasn't even the analytical department's pick. It wasn't the regular uh, the uh, scouts that wanted him. It was Jeffrey Lurie that wanted him. Jeffrey Lurie overrules everything. Everybody said, I understand we got Bryce Huff, but I think they should go to defensive line just to get... I mean, I, I, it doesn't hurt. I'm I'm still... I still... At least if you give up Hassan Reddick, like, you got nothing in fucking return for. Like, you're not even going to get a fucking second-round pick. I highly doubt it. Over... Six, he's got to play 67.5% of the snaps, and he's got to get 10-plus sacks to even let that shit turn to a second-rounder. You know what I mean? Like, to me, it's just, it really makes, it really makes no fucking sense. Why is the 26th third round conditional? I mean, not even a third rounder, and that's still a bullshit. I understand a lot of players, I understand that because they have to pay him, that they're not going to give up big draft compensation. The Titans had to pay Legarius Sneed. They didn't give up big comments. A 25 fourth, what, 25 third? 25 third rounder for Legarius Sneed because you have to pay him. So, you know, I, I, it, it, you're doing all these moves. You add Bryce Huff. Josh Weck gets restructured. And then all of a sudden I see like, now I see Hassan Reddick's father or his father or something like tweeted out about like he was baffled how the Eagles didn't resign him. And then Brian Baldy says it wasn't about the money. So what the fuck? What happened? I mean, what happened? Seriously, I'm, I'm still like you do all these free agency moves. Bryce Huff was a really good added piece for the future, especially with Reddick being here. And I'm not shitting on Bryce Huff. Bryce Huff is going to be a fucking monster. But now I feel like you're weak on the other side because you have no coverage. You have no off coverage outside linebacker slash defensive end hybrid. You don't have one on that side. Josh Wett ain't going to do that for you. Brandon Graham ain't going to do that for you. So I think of it as a pure weakness right now. And they're just going to fucking ignore it? You know what I mean? Come on, Donnie. Uh, there are says that a lot of people doubting Devin White and his... Yeah, no, a lot of people are doubting him because... They, like, look, half of the people, half of the people, all they do is look at his statistics and they're like, he's bad. I mean, that's really it. Has he lived up to the fourth, fifth overall pick? No. 
but you're I, I mean there's just he's been wanting out of Tampa Bay the last two fucking years okay under Tom Brady when Tom Brady got to Tampa he had a fantastic fucking playoff run Devin White was a monster in the playoffs but you're getting a voice that that man is a leader on a team okay on top of Chauncey on top of everything Devin White can get after the quarterback. Devin White is just athletically sound. Devin White is the best linebacker on this team right now. And I think they should add to it. You know? Come on, Sue. I'm really starting to want Jackson Powers. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Jackson Powers is, I think, legit. It is legit a, a major target for the Eagles. No doubt. Hero says, Joey Shake. Wait, what's going on, man? Eagles on the answer. Umbrella Man was Lurie's pick. I'm telling you, it's true. 100%. That's why you need to have people in the draft room to help how we draft players, especially players that will make an impact right away. Well, I don't think it's... it's. I think he has all the help. I think he's been vetoed so much. He's been... He's been overruled so much in the past that that's been the big issue. But when you draft good talent and you can't produce them because your coaching staff is not doing the right thing by the players, it's it's not on the players. You know, you know what I mean? Like that that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm already uncomfortable enough this year that Vic Fangio is just like letting guys go that don't fit his scheme, and it's his rules, his scheme. You know, not saying it's a dictatorship or anything, but it's like, dude, look at your defense. Is it more 4-4-3 or is it more 4-3? You know, and I'm sorry, but a lot of a lot of a lot of teams are run defenses like this, especially every every down. You know what I mean? It's gonna be multiple fronts. It's what we've been running the last few years, but at least if you're getting the best guy for the job, you're getting the best guy for the job in Vic Fangio. I don't like the scheme. Though. Trust me, I don't. Joey, what's it going to take to get... Nothing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I think he'll make it. It really depends how the board falls. It really depends how the board falls. So, even if it's 16, I don't think Howie's making a trade before the draft. I think on draft day, he's going to try to move up. Because most of the time... It's mostly on draft day he will move up, um, because you don't want you don't want to make a mistake before the draft. Make this trade happen. Like obviously these trades happen before the draft. So the morning, you know, the AJ Brown trade that happened like that morning of the draft. Um, like I said, it's just a rumor. I mean, they can move up to thirteen. They can move up. To, you know what I mean? They. I mean, I, I think they're they're in good contention of getting him at that point. Cooper. Yeah, Cooper Beeb is another, another good one. Another, no, I, I have, I have, you know, if they want to stay at 22, I mean, isn't Cooper Beeb like a second rounder though? A, a two pick though? And the owner have an effect on what players get drafted? I mean, yeah, sure. But like, I think we're past that now. I think we're way past that. If Lurie is the one that has told Howie not to draft from the SEC, and he's the one that overruled Howie Roseman and the scouts and the analytical department to go get J.J. Ortega Whiteside over Harris Campbell, then bad. Steve Rose says, draft all Coopers. Straight back, get Cooper DeGene, then move up in the second and get Edgren Cooper, get Cooper Beeb. It's the Cooper draft of all Coopers. Why not? Then bring back Riley Cooper. What's going on, Joseph F? There's a season when Tom Brady won on the Bucks. Was only Watch. It was, you know what? It it was it was cool to see Tom go to another team and like 
change it so like just the way he changed that in one year just what he did crazy you know chris what's going on chris god so we have to move up a couple rounds to get him powers no a couple spots i i don't know if they have to move up maybe they have to move up a few spots like i said like it might not be 16 they could move up they could move up 15. They could move up 14. I mean, they can move up a few spots. Yeah, Howie's here for one more year. He says, yeah, every national media guy said it's cool. Well, yeah, even Brian, Brian Baldy is probably the one guy I watch in season because he goes over, like, all these plays. Like... I remember, I forgot what game it was, but he went over one of the, he went over the offense and how things were being, you know, they were running things. And he was like, what route combinations are they running? Like, what, who are they trying to get open? Like, this guy's running into, I saw two receivers run into each other. Like, it, it was a fucking mess, dude. Like, it was a mess. I was like, man, you know, like, It was just Dallas Turner, Jackson Powers, or Cooper DeGene is who I want to walk away with in the first. And I think you're right on that because as much as I like Jay, uh, as long as I like uh, 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 Jared Verse, I, I like Dallas Turner better because I feel like he fits the scheme a lot better. I think he's a really good pass rusher, and I think his coverage is, is pretty damn good too. So I like Dallas Turner a lot. Other Dallas coming to Philadelphia. John says, what weakness does Powers Johnson have? Not much. I mean, he's he's a little, he's uh weakness-wise, really nothing, to be honest. He's the most NFL pro ready player, best offensive lineman in the league. And I'm telling you, you get Jackson Powers Johnson, dude. I'm telling you. You're you're set for 12 years. I mean, you're you're set. I mean, it's almost automatic because Jackson Powers Johnson can play center and guard, which is great. Now, I don't know what the Eagles would do. Like, I don't think you should take a guy out of position. I think he plays actually better at center. That would, you know, you want to play him at the better position that he's that he's played in college more of. Yeah, sure. Um, You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, you can move. You could keep Jurgens at right guard. Okay. And then you'll have Tyler Steen that could cross train to right tackle. You have you have you have uh, Matt Hennessy that can play center and guard more more center. So you'll have a that two backup centers and and guys that can play and two guys that can play guard as well. So I think it works out really well. And Jackson Powers, watch some of his blocks and his he's got nastiness. He's got edge. He fucking I mean, my God. He fit here very well. Very well. Very, very well. Chris Scott says, what people are forgetting is we have a vet, uh, we have new veteran coaches uh, who are highly thought of. Um, we have a lot of talent. Coaching alone makes us better than last year. Our collapse happened. And yeah, no, it, it, it can't. What we went through last year was I turned to a different Eagles fan after that the second Cowboys loss. 49ers loss. I said if we get if we get beaten by the Cowboys, I'm like I'm 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 gonna be turning into an Eagles fan that people are not gonna like because which means I'm gonna be even more realistic. Um, I'm not gonna kiss this team's ass every week and just the last seven weeks. I'm like oh you know the the one thing they had on their side like the first at least the first loss against the 49ers and the Cowboys at least the first couple losses. I, all I said was this. They have time on their side to get it right. And they already clinched a playoff spot. They still had a fucking playoff game. No adjustments. No sense of urgency. Almost lost the locker room. It was a complete disaster. John Jones says, great job, Joey. You, I appreciate it so much. Well, we, we, we definitely appreciate it so much. And yes, guys, if you guys don't know, we'll be me and Philly will be streaming all three days of the draft. All three days. On both channels, make sure you support both channels. What's up, Um, John 
Don says, the, yeah, Joey, there were, I think, some people that didn't want... People didn't want Jordan Davis. The only thing I said about Jordan Davis was that if they can maintain his weight, like, make sure he doesn't go overweight, he's going to lose his, lose his explosiveness. That's where, like, I was afraid. But as soon as I saw Jordan Davis at the combine, even watching his play, but watching him at the combine as well, I was like, damn. I was like, this might be the pick. It might be. <clears throat> no, so. Ty says, yeah, Cooper's likely second round. Would be awesome if we get him at 50. It's a big risk, though. You mean E. Cooper? E. Cooper, I think they would they might have they they probably have to move up. They have 50 and 53 right now. They're gonna have to move up with that second rounder. I think 50's kind of out of the they, they might have to make a big jump. They got three fifth round picks on top of it. Chris Scott said, I'm telling everyone Moore is going to have his offense humming. These last two years, our offense was good. This year could be out. No, I I, I agree. I, I'm, I was a big fan of the Moore signing when it happened because I know how he runs these offenses. Top 10 pre-snap motion. I mean, the RPOs are going to be insane. He likes to get these running backs with the ball in their hands, especially in the passing game. Um, and I think that's where Saquon's going to really shine a lot. Um Yes, these receive not, and he likes all receiver positions. He doesn't favor one or the other. Wide receiver threes is very important too. Loves using tight ends. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Um, I'm, I'm, I, it can't, it can't be worse. It really can't. Um, more Keenan Allen had his best year of his career under Kellen Moore, and the Chargers were hurt all year offensively. Herbert was hurt. Quentin Johnson, their but their first round pick, I mean, really needs to step up this year because he hasn't done nothing. That team. Uh, Nathan says, "I want to get past it too, but the repeated strange moves make me nervous." What what strange move? You mean like the Reddick move? It's it's for me. Um, uh, it's strange, but it's not strange. It's strange because of the compensation we got back. If he was valued so much by the Eagles, and why is it a twenty six? 26 third round conditionally it's it's like they gave him away I, I mean something something strange is going on you know what else is funny what else is funny too is the contract hasn't even been fucking signed yet by reddick like where's this contract new contract he's supposed to happened yet he plays on that he plays on his 14 and a half million dollars this year and something really bad happened he goes to the Jets and plays on his last year. Or he could have played his last year here. Then, wow. Now, so who from the front office made the decision to get Rager, Nick, Jeff, Howie? I think from what I from what Howie said at one of the press conferences about Rager to the Justin Jefferson pick. Okay, I think Howie fucked up on that. But part of it is Lurie because. Part of it was Lurie because we weren't drafting from SEC teams. A DK Metcalf made us pay as a rookie. Yeah. Remember DK Metcalf? Remember like when Jim when Jim Schwartz went up to him and I forgot what happened before that game. Jim Schwartz went up to him and said like, "You ain't Calvin Johnson or." He said some stupid shit to him, like, before the game happened. Lil listen, the future is now. We good. You'll see. Uh, Chris, if P. Wilson is a better fit um, in this defense against the press, he is a run and rushing the team. Yeah. I mean, I think you're going to have a combination of guys that are good at rushing the passer, like, E. Cooper, um, Devin White's great at that. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it's gonna be offensive line, and I think it's gonna be defensive end and a hybrid defensive end slash outside line. So, and then on top of everything else, Cooper DeGene is definitely on Howie's draft board. All right. Maria Stan says no rookie would start on this O line without a year of Stalin. You and Steen is way better. 
Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. Like Steen was too, you know, Steen unfortunately like just too raw last year. He had a couple starts last year. He didn't play great, but he didn't play horrible. You know what I mean, but it was a first start, so I can't can't go crazy. Blue Five says if we draft Dallas Turner, we will be able to Dallas when we play the Cowgirls. <laughs> Chris B says, Joe, you're sleeping on chop. Numbers aren't th aren't there, but super explosive. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 where I that's where it kind of makes me nervous. And eh, maybe I am. Maybe he will be a great player. I could be wrong. I'm I'm not always right about everything, but you know, four sacks, I mean, not even 20 tackles. We're going we're going off of we're going off of what just pressures. He had a great combine, but I don't want this, I don't want chop to be an analytical pick. You know what I mean? Maria says Durgan's not good at guard. He will start at center. If they if they draft Jackson Powers, he ain't going to center. He ain't going to center. Dorothy Lima, what's going on? Well, says Jurgens is fine at guard. Stop the cap. Check the stats. They're all fine. Do we want great and for defense first round is a question. Best player available, bro. He says we need a backup swing OT. We have none. Yeah, we don't have any backup tackle right now. We don't have anybody to play tackle right now. Problem. Oh, King Gaming, what's going on, dude? I just says people on Twitter is biased towards the Eagles and thinking 49ers will be back. People don't know how hard it is to get to the Yeah, I mean it's and you know why the 49ers have all the 49ers can do whatever they want at this point because they're not paying a quarterback right now. And I'm telling you right now, they have one more year. It's 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 after this year, there's gonna be contract talks for for Brock Purdy. After this year. Uh, contract talks for Brock Purdy. And, and you, let me tell you something. That, that guy is gonna get paid. It, it might be the, the biggest contract ever. Okay. Um He's gonna get a lot of money, and the reason why they can do all these moves because they're not paying a quarterback. Like I said, like the cat, and you know, I don't think they have the best GM over there. I mean, because when you're not paying a quarterback, I think it's very easy to make moves. Like I said, um, you know, so we'll we'll see. Those that most of these dudes are gonna fall anyways because the other dumb GMs out there just well, yeah, everything we're hearing is not necessarily being anything of truth. Okay. Every time we hear something, it's, and, you know, once the draft goes, oh, dude, like, oh, my God, he's right there. Like, how did he drop? Why is he dropping in the draft? What's going on? And it's because we hear too much of something online, and then they don't get drafted at that specific spot in the draft, and then it happens. Gang Gang 22, so the Eagles will address O-line early. They need depth at, at, at the very least. Yeah, they need depth. I mean... But we're not talking about a move for just this year. We're talking... If you're just talking about this year, then yeah, all they need is depth. But if you're talking about the future on top of this year, yeah. If you have a guy that comes in the first round and starts for you and is the top prospect and Jackson Powers, I am telling you, I will be... You don't understand, like, if they drafted Jackson Powers, I will be fucking so happy. Because... It's only going to make our run game better. It's only going to make our protection better. I mean, they get Jackson Powers, and on top of every, I, you create you create more depth with a Jackson Powers move with Steen and with Hennessy and other guys. So you can always just add, dude. Uh, Steve says, "I think I really think Howie cooking something up. Big splash coming. I hope so, dude. I hope so. You know what else is funny? Joey's face." Hey, if it is, then great. I don't get that compliment much. So. Cole King says, if the Eagles are going for a Super Bowl this year, we're we getting Trotter and Kool-Aid and line and line depth. If not, I don't know. Why do they? Why do they need Kool-Aid? Like I understand where you're going with, but when you talk about a corner in the first round, why are they drafting a corner in the first round? I just want to know that because why? Look at the roster. Why would they need an outside corner right now? If if Bradbury's not getting moved, they're not drafting no corner in the first round. Not happening. And what is the and what is the this what is 
See, people always make fun of me of this love affair with Chauncey Garner Johnson because I know what he brings to this defense. And obviously, the number one thing is accountability. Number two, number two thing is it's a tone setting fucking player. What is this love affair with Trotter Jr.? The name? I mean, other than that, I I'm not in love with him like everyone else is for some weird reason. And I'm not against it. I just don't get it. Like, what's you know what I mean? If he plays well, then great. Is that like their top linebacker on their board right now? I doubt it. Because Vespedio talked to Reddick about how he's going to get used in the system, and Reddick doesn't like it, so they got rid of him. Now you're, yeah, uh, you're, you're don't don't fall for the don't fall for the Dan Cilio reports because that's bad. Until I see it that until I see that it, that is actually true, we'll see. Is it a possibility? Sure. Uh, Neil Saw says, "Hey Joey, uh, Jake uh, Rabbit, he said just broke out saying we have thirty point five million cap space uh, left. What you think we should do with it? I mean, nothing. You need five. Well, you need five million for the draft. I mean, you only don't you don't well, five a little bit over five million for the draft. You don't need much." Um, nothing. They just sit tight until after the draft, po you know, post draft, wait, you know, if they don't draft the safety, you know, if they, if they don't want a Tyler Newbin, if they don't want a kitchens, if they don't want a Javon Bullard and Javon Bullard, I, I absolutely love and would love Ponce and Bullard to be that tandem. Fantastic. They don't grab a top tier safety, at least in the second round. I think. I think as of now, they will go after Justin Simmons post year. That if they don't get their guy in the draft and don't have a chance to get a guy that they draft, that's because they have to add another body regardless. I'm going to add another body there. Uh, fitness rovers says went off for 160 plus slay was long sure so i think two of the uh, fifths get us to 39 we have to get in front of the Packers. Includes to stop please stop talk, trying to talk us into an offensive line why is that such a horrible why is it such a horrible pick though like why do people hate it so because it's not a skill position because it's not a sexy pick i understand like i i totally understand like trust me like I get it. We just want weapons and I get it, but you don't realize like getting a getting a guy like that is like that sets you up for your offensive line is set for years with that boom. It's it's set up for years. You know? Hey, Jurgens will be better center for us than ever could. We'll see. We will see. As to make the transition, you no, know, and he's he's played it. I mean, at the end of the day, like Jurgens has had a lot of work at center too. I mean, he's had a lot of work there as well. I think he can handle it. I, I'm not against him not hand. Uh, Luke said the Niners' best shot to win was last year, but why was devastated them the way it did? Oh yeah, it did. Cause like as soon as like as soon as they start having injuries or if you know things happen like that, like I feel like every time the problem is like it, it's they came back. It's not like they didn't come back. Um the 49ers went through a little stint during the year. They they you know they had an injury. Like I feel like every time Brock Purdy loses a weapon on his offense, he just fucking folds like a lawn chair. But it was for a couple games and then they came back. They were fine. The Eagles got down and they never rose above. They 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 you know they went into a, a deep hole and they never got out of it. Ray says Diggerson only started as a rookie because of it to Brooks. Yeah, so I was at the home so the home opener when Diggerson was drafted. Okay, so the home opener was against the 49ers. Okay, Brooks started right guard. Brooks started at right guard. 
Brooks got hurt. Dickerson went in at right guard. He didn't play well at all, and he got hurt as well. Then and you know later on they switched him to left guard, and that was it. Chris, I want Jerry Rue so bad. I I get it. Trust me. Luke Skyler says, Joey, I'm also a Jackson Powers Johnson. This is I, I still see an incoming trade coming in during the draft for a significant player. I don't know who it's going to be. That Melata extension is that trade. He says, I still see an incoming trade coming in during the player. Oh, who it's going to be? Um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. I, I mean, I th I don't think the extensions are going to open up a big move for somebody else, but you're talking about Devontae Smith extension. That's definitely going to happen. Um, but, you know, but yeah, well, yo, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what goes on, you know, what happens. I was just reading about the Eagles third round picks. It was an eye opener that most of the picks were busts. Well, can't call a third round pick a bust. Bust would be a first round pick. There's no such thing as a bust third rounder. You use bust to be for a first round pick that didn't live up to expectations. That's kind of where we're at with that word. You know, like a third a third round a third rounder is a role player. Third round a third really your your first your first two picks your first and second rounder should should be on the field. Okay, your third and fourth round picks are role players. Your fifth to seventh round picks are just you know, you're either going to hit on them or you're not. You know? Chris says, I honestly have no idea what how he's going to do in this draft. I'm the same way, dude. And that's the, that's the awesome. That is the most awesome part about it. The only news that we've heard from a player that they've really liked was was Cooper DeGene that that the Eagles front office is raving about him. That is the only news that we have heard. And other than that, and that was from like a week ago, a week and a half ago, maybe even two weeks ago. I won't go that back that far, but that's where we're pretty much at with all that. Dane says, "Thing we could get inside top four for Marvin Harrison Jr. There is a name. Ah, that's definitely not happening. I mean." The player would be awesome, but where we're at, even if they move up like top 16, they wouldn't get him. Troll says, I bet Bradbury will be a post June cut. Imagine Chauncey and Kool Aid, and I only said Trotter. I don't think Kool fall to us. Well, Cha well, Kool Aid's a corner, so it can't be Chauncey and Kool Aid's a corner. Um, Bradbury's not getting cut. Not getting cut. It, it, like if he has a chance to start for another team, they wouldn't cut him this. Like Avante Max, they cut him early. They cut him. Okay, they cut Avante Max. They could have post June cut him for seven point one million dollars in cap space, but they cut him for two million because out of respect, they wanted him. They didn't want to. They wanted him to get a chance to talk to team, you know, do his thing. If they already get rid of Bradbury, they would have already done it by now. It would have been already done. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening at all. This is the team would be a great pick to start at safety. Yeah. Uh, Philly actually mentioned that on the shakedown the other night. And I, I definitely believe it because I don't think the Eagles are looking at him as a corner. I think they're looking at him as a weapon, you know, a Malcolm Jenkins type that could just band-aid your certain positions, you know, certain matchups you could put the gene in um, and make him flourish. You know? So, I get it. Gang, gang, 20 Houston. Not only do I think the Eagles go O-line, I think they move up to pick one. I, I I agree. It's not off the table. Jackson Powers Johnson's not off the table. Offensive line is definitely not, uh, not off the table in the first round, especially. I could be wrong, but I think the Eagles fan base is extra angsty after the collapse. So they really want a sexy, but I, I get it. You want a skill position guy. I get it. I just don't think it's all about that though. 
you know how many teams ignore offensive line and see the Giants like they're grabbing this guy offensive line free agency and they're paying a good they're paying a big chunk of money to because they have no choice because they, they don't know how to build an offensive line like you actually have a GM that cares about the trenches not a lot of GMs that give a shit because when GMs don't care about trenches you end your quarterback's career pretty fucking fast RG3 uh, you know, Andrew Luck, like guys like that didn't last long in the league because or, or weren't really the same after certain seasons because they were handicapped. You know, like problem. So I think choking is silly. Uh. Whatever, whatever. I don't care. You think I care after after eight years? On, I've been no. I've been on YouTube for yeah. This will be my ninth year. Nine years. He says, "I'd like to believe that Steve the same degree that you do. I'm just not there. I get." To I think Steen just needs another off season. I, I mean, I think he just needs. It. No, I, I would try to cross train him to right tackle. I would try to do something with Lane's going to leave a couple of years. No. Chris said, we got Saquon for a reason. We're going back to running the football. Saquon jailing the RPO will cause decent migraines. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think they're going to run a lot more than they did last year. And from what it looks like from the run pass ratio from Kellen Moore last year, they, they ran the ball more than the last year. Um, so it won't be much. And I wonder if things are going to change just a little bit, you know, cause I think, you know, when you get a, a running back like Saquon Barkley, you obviously need to put into consideration that he's not going to go out for passes, passing game. Which, you know, Kellamore has done with guys like Tony Pollard and, and Austin Eckler and other guys. You know what I mean? Um, but you got to be fair to it as well uh, of your assessment. You might have to change some things like, all right, we have to run with Aquan just a little bit more um, than I have in, in recent seasons. Uh, Stalin loves him, says he gives Brooks five. Like I said, you, got, you have to give it time. Second round picks, you need to give them two. You know what I mean? First round picks, you gotta give them at least two years. These second round picks, like they'll hit, they'll, they'll you know, they they should hit within. You'll see at least an upgrade. You know, Sarah says the offensive line is the engine. Offense, it is. Uh, Cody Wilson says our offensive line is already still above average, though. My point is, let's start getting some more young defenders. Early. Yeah, I mean, I I don't mind them going defense in the first round, but I mean, the only possible thing that I can see them doing is really I, all I see them going is defensive end. I don't really see them going DT. I don't see them going linebacker. I don't see them going corner. Um. I think edge rusher is like the second, I think the second biggest spot they could, they're going to definitely pick there. I was obviously agree with what you say on Bradbury, but they could have designated Maddox as post June. Nothing to do with respect. Still not sure why he, they players. He, I, it's just, I'm just going by what the Eagles are doing. And like, they wouldn't really, they, they're not going to post June cut Bradbury this late. Okay. And say, oh, well, you're, and screw the player over and say, well, there you go. You're going to have to find a new team now. Like, I, I just don't see it happening. If Bradbury played that bad and he was that god awful, and I think everybody was awful, it wasn't just him. I think it was everybody. Uh, Bradbury has, you know, but oh, there's got to be moving parts that work with, you know, Bradbury's not the whole defense. Uh, Reddick's not the whole defense. Okay, it's everybody, everybody. All these moving pieces have to work. And it's on, on top of that, it's coaching. So 
Bradbury played well in 22 under under um you know under uh Vic Fangio as a consultant before he left two weeks before the Super Bowl. You know, when you have a pass rush, it definitely helps. No doubt. No. I'm Joe, I'm gonna get to your account to 100 k <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh Chris Damon guys, I still think Troy Montana would be a good pick. Reportedly Stout loves him and play guard and move tackle. That's great. The problem I have with this, this lot this offensive, if it's not Jackson Powers, the only issue I have with it right now. If they want to draft a tackle slash guard and they think he's a better guard for right now then sure. But if they draft a tackle, a pure tackle in the first round, you're redshirting him. That's the only issue I have with the whole thing. You know? But we'll, we'll see. He's going through this. Cooper really played safety. He's a good tackler. That's why people are talking about him, but Iowa knew his speed, cover skills couldn't be ignored. He's a true corner. Where does, where does that come from? A lot of people, a lot of people have been saying that he's more of a Swiss Army knife that could play safety. That he's, you know, because he's got that back end speed towards him. Um, you know, because I, the Eagles maybe view him as more of a, a more of a weapon than just a cornerback. That he could be a Malcolm Jenkins type piece that can move around for your defense to get certain matchups. I don't know. I mean, that's that's the most I'm getting out of the news that we're seeing. So far um on what the eagles want and i don't think you know he's going to be drafted high at all he could be a late first he could be a day two pick you know i think definitely gonna move down um so you know we'll see you know what i mean i mean i i feel like i feel like if you're drafting a corner in the first round like you're obviously drafting him to be an outside you know outside corner i don't know you, you don't draft nickels in the first round If if he moves to, if he moves to the second day, I think I think it will be a steal for the Eagles no doubt because I think his versatility will definitely help in a Vic Fangio three four type scheme. Um, you know, that's that's where I kind of go with that situation. Why the Eagles don't like him, but to up for him, he's the only guy I see him getting drafted. But with, with Bradbury here, it, it just it makes no sense. They're, if they haven't moved Bradbury yet, there there's no point in getting Quinn and Mitchell. There, there's no point in getting any of these guys first round. Nobody. Oh, see, see. Chris, that big time beast like uh, Jax Carter Johnson would be a race that run game at least. Got her uh, wide open in the. So God forbid we had, really. He was mock draft in the first round. Move up, dra uh, draft Dallas Turner. Our fifty pick Edgar and Cooper. I'm back. Our fifty dollar new. Um, and Ray, Ray Davis. I think even I think Corum is a good running back too for Michigan. Another guy that would fell in a row. Um, we'll see. And it says, I have been watching you in Philly Farmer for the past year and a half and then realized I'm not subscribed to you. I just hit the subscribe button. I appreciate Kenneth so much, man. He's a lot, dude. Yeah, I mean, we're we're pretty consistent in what we do, so you know, we're always trying to bring as much as possible. We're a thing. We're gonna have a lot of fun during the draft. I'm really excited. Chris says, I don't think we'll have many weeks another proven edge rusher in a trader draft uh reverse or that too yeah i mean i think i think justin simmons could be a post june signing um we'll see um like i said guys like i think i'm gonna stick to 
Jackson Powers Johnson. And I'm going to stick to getting a defensive end or a defensive end slash hybrid outside linebacker. That's, that's what I'm looking for right now. Donald says, what up, my Eagles brother from another mother? How you still haven't watched something about Mary? You know the answer to that. Do I have to say the answer to that? Uh, <laughs> Billy Dick said, I changed my mind. The Eagles should get Justice Simmons also draft the safety. I mean, they, they could do both. I mean, I think they need one more body, really. I mean, I think they need one more. You're either going to get a safety in the second round or you're, or you're going to get Justin Simmons. That's... I think it's either. I don't think they do both, especially that early. Bounce says, Howie has to hit this draft next year's because Howie, I think I heard him say the draft and picking good kind of starts with him, so he realizes that he needs to hit on this draft. Well, yeah, that's obvious, but I don't think Howie is going anywhere. Um, see, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think it'll be a long time before that happens. First, I was thinking how he should parse from Dallas. I would swap 20 second, 56 pick, give him a second round. Yeah, that news was interesting, wasn't it? I mean, it wouldn't shock me if a lot of a lot of players getting new contracts going into next year, especially Michael Parsons, thinks about staying in Dallas because of just the way they're doing it. All the news that they're thinking like Michael Parsons is a big distraction. I don't know if it's just to get them, you know, get the news on Dallas or whatever, but we'll see. Would you rather have Queen and Mitchell or Dallas Turner? Honestly, I mean, given the choice of like in general, I mean, I I'd honestly go Queen and Mitchell if like we had a different a different situation at corner and we we didn't have Brad Barry or something like that. Um, but with Dallas Turner, I think is the better option. Whether you have to move up a little bit further than sixteen as room, um, you know, that at least gives you. More of a scheme fit for Vic Fangio and what he likes to do with edge rush. This is Jackson Power Johnson. There's me, but definitely helped him. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I think he's a pure center. I guess more of a pure center, I guess you could say. Uh, I think it comes down to like, I don't, I mean, I'm hearing he's a top, I don't know, top 12 pick this year. I mean, he could drop. It might happen. Um, but we'll see. You know, like, consistency is key, though. You know, that, that, that is a big problem that maybe he will move down this draft a little bit. Of the potential or the feeling that he does have years years to come this is jamar would give dallas 20 uh, 22 and nolan smith for parsons so i believe howie may not agree with everything but i do but i but i believe he'll get us more i'm hoping so it's not really him that's getting us more rings. I mean, yeah, I mean, it comes down to this coaching staff. I mean, you've had you've had to switch over your coordinators already. You know what I mean? That's a problem. Can't do that every year. If Fangio doesn't work out this year and everything fucking flops, oh yeah. It, um, I don't think I'm not really worried about the offense too much. It's really this defense. I'm like, I'm going crazy about. If Fangio totally flops this season, Nick and Fangio got to go. And I honestly, I think, um, I think Kel Moore could be the, I think Kel Moore's in prime position to be the next head coach. 
I actually think that. And eh, he's not a he's not a rah rah type coach. He, you know, he's an X's and O's or to himself, but Stacy Joe, would you be mad if the Eagles trade out of the first? No, I, I no, of course not. Like out of the four out of the four out of the five years, four times they've they've moved up. They've traded up. Um I don't know if they will. We'll see. I know the Bills are trying to move up from twenty eight. That was the rumor, I think, from last night. Um, you know, they might they probably they're probably getting a wide receiver from what the or I mean Stefan Diggs, so they're probably This is yeah, quitting over Dallas, correct. Just finished up my evaluation of Nasty Bull Rush, who's the first round talent in that aspect. Yeah, I, I like Dallas Turner a lot. I mean, look, Quin Quinion is is interesting. You know, I I honestly think he's the best corner in this draft. Um but like I've I've kind of ignored the the corner factor with the Eagles just because I, I like I said, I go by what the Eagles do in free agency and that kind of designate that to what it looks like when it goes into the draft. So if I see two starting caliber corners in Philadelphia, right? Now, you know, you're not drafting Quinny and Mitch Aaron Arnold or Nate Wiggins or some other guys. You're not drafting them to play nickel and can't play on the that's some of them can. Um but you know the Eagles don't they don't we don't play press coverage. You know, that's that's a whole nother aspect of the whole thing with corner. You're not playing press coverage, so you're diminishing everybody's skill set, you know, at that point. Drafting a guy in the first round to play some press coverage, man, or you know, play you play off ball. You're playing off ball. You thought we were playing off ball that much the last few years? Wait, wait till this year. Even worse. It's by another forty five percent will be playing off ball coverage. You know, off ball. Period. Uh, Chris, and Sydney Brown is talking about being ready by the regular season. I'm still bringing in Simmons for a one year deal. Next year it could be Chauncey and uh, Sydney Brown as starters. Yeah, like I'm. No, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't go off of. I I, I honestly wouldn't go off of uh, just because Sydney Brown's coming back, and that was good news. Like that's great. Really happy for. Him. You know what I mean, so I'm glad that he's miles, quote unquote, miles ahead of his. Uh, coming back from the ACL, which is good because I I like Sidney Brown a lot, and I think he's a better safety than a better cornerback. I just think he has really good uh, backtrack speed, athletic ability. He's he had some good pass breakups this year. He had some close too because there was times where he was running as fast as he possibly could when he got beat. Yeah, he did a really good job. I thought he played really well. Put him in a meaningless game to get his uh, get a torn ACL. It just sucks, man. Horrible. Uh, we said Dan too. He's smarter than knows more football than Nick. He played in the NFL. Nick played college ball. Oh yeah, <coughs> Boise State. I think what Kellen Moore went to Boise State. So he doesn't really take. So when it comes to Kellen Moore's play calling, he doesn't take much from like he's not he's not similar to a lot of coaches in the league. But he takes what he did at Boise State a lot of what he learned at Boise State, um, as a quarterback. Interesting. East Coast Grounds, so Nate Wiggins to me or Taryn Arnold or the aspect. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the the one complaint that everybody's been talking about with Nate Wiggins is is I guess his small frame. I guess. Ever like for the Eagles fans, everyone says he's like the Devontae Smith on D. Dogging on him because of that. Um, but I I think he's. Um, is that sort of thing, Cooper DeGene? Howie guy. This is Maria. You can't be serious. Chauncey Garner, good against the pass. Brown hits the truck. He's very average in coverage. Um, seventh worst tackling safety. 
Yeah, he's got he's yeah, I mean look. Fonsi is uh he's made some good tackles. Tackles I think it's all about the other movies as well, but Fonsi's a ball hawk too. His coverage skill. Give it more of a chance, but I think we'll I think we'll be perfectly fine with him. He's got he's got a three year deal for ten. I mean, look, you didn't overpay him. He got three years, ten million guarantee. I mean, got a lot of incentives in that deal. Dude, Marina, everybody missed tackles last year. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like everybody sucked last year. Like don't please don't go off of last year on everybody tackling because nobody can fucking tackle. Not I, there wasn't one player that could tackle last year. There wasn't one player. You know? East Coast says uh, Nate Wiggins on film lays the boom every game. I fell out. I don't. I think I don't think his frame is a. Yeah, hey, that's 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 what I was hearing from everybody, and I've I've watched some things on Nate as well, and and he plays big. He does. He does. I'm excited to see what happens. Oh, the draft is always great. Listen, I still can't wait to be surprised by who we draft and what we do in the first three rounds. I like a lot of players, and I would with a variety of them. You know, if it helps my man play also. So I'm answer. on Jules this is coaching last year big factor we shall see the season with all players he said uh East Coast says we're gonna Quinn and has big bus potential I agree but I was there at the senior person I can tell you yeah I I watched um I watched some of his senior bowl stuff. Uh, a lot of people that recorded a lot of stuff on him. And he's physical. He reminds me of, I don't know, in a in a weird way, and I, I think I agree with Philly on this too. Like he reminds me of sauce and I got that pushback to him, which I really do like. But uh yeah, he's um he's handsy. A little he's a little handsy, but he's uh I I you know, I think he brings it. Um, Maria says Brown missed a lot of tackles in college. Looking for highlights. I need to see him in the NFL moment. Well, we got 155 of the channel. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I'll cover the Eagles every single day. Uh, we'll have two membership videos out tomorrow. Um, we'll have a video out tomorrow as well. Uh, and to let everybody know, me and Philly will have a surprise for you guys right before the draft. We'll have. Um, we have something cooking right now. I can't tell you what it is, but just something you look forward, something to look forward to. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll be streaming from both channels all three days, and we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, we can't wait. We're just gonna chill out and you know, watch this draft and do our thing. So, uh, if you guys haven't check out the memberships as well for support and obviously some extra content. There's extra content every day within the memberships. Hit the pin comment up above. Um, and definitely join up any tier doesn't matter you get all the extra content doesn't matter what it is um and yeah i mean there's gonna be a lot of content so tomorrow i mean the free agency streams are done now we've pretty much been done with them the last couple of days but starting um we're about to start um tomorrow on the road to the eagles road to the draft stream starting tomorrow until the draft so uh, we'll be streaming probably most likely every day um, and talk about things. Any type of rumors or anything happens, like when we're streaming, anything happens, rumor-wise, we'll read stuff, we'll talk about things, um, and we'll be prepared, we'll be ready. So, But I think I'm going to give it another two minutes. I think I'm kind of over the time right now. Yeah, I, I want to do at least an hour today. It's been a, it's been a crazy couple of days. Um, crazy couple of days. It's been kind of nuts. Uh, I want to get some other stuff done for the day. Um, this month's going to be nuts because really after this month, uh, half of May, and then it's it's vacation time. You know, it's it's relaxation time and enjoying ourselves. Time. Um, you know, do our thing.
Uh, Trucker Gabe said, we just need some good, uh, uh, good, quick tacklers, hip, hip drop, tackle, band. Can't have guys get cooked all the time. I know coaching was. Uh, speak can't be taught tackling aside. Just, oh, I mean, a lot. Um, it, it, it was bad. I mean, that, that rule, I mean, it's positive for us because we have Saquon Barkley, but it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna fuck up a lot of shit this year. That, that hip drop tackle penalty now, I think it's going to ruin a playoff game. Ima imagine that thing ruining a playoff game and even even try ruining um, a Super Bowl, you know? It's going to suck, dude. Fred who's that Brock Bowers there at 22. Do you take him? Depends who's on the board. Depends who's left. I mean, I don't think Brock, I don't think Brock Bowers is even going to make it there. He won't even make it close to that. Uh, 22. Another outside the box move the Eagles take. I said I wouldn't mind going offensive line the first. <laughs> Joe Sandoz says we need to be on the road to Josh Allen. It would be interesting, you know. It's it's not closed. I mean, I haven't heard any teams going after. And usually, if it's quiet, it's a good thing because a lot of look the AJ Brown thing happened behind the scenes. We had no, there was no rumors on it. There was nothing going on about it. You know what I mean? So, Josh Allen would be interesting, man. Non-exclusive tag. Teams can make offers for Josh Allen coming off what 16, 17 sack season. You know, uh, he only gave up one hundred thirty yards. I think. It, coverage last year with the Jags I mean I forgot how many snaps but damn that that is a that is a complimentary hybrid edge rusher slash outside linebacker that you would be fan it's gonna cost you it's gonna cost you though I give up I, I'd give up 22 for him Yes, many will get his extension. I'm not. I'm not worried about it. It's. It might not even happen. It, it might not even happen like this off season. It could happen before the camp. It could happen before the season starts. I mean, it's gonna happen. You know, I think Smitty is not. I think Smitty is waiting for these other contracts. He's waiting for Justin Jefferson to get signed. I think the, his agent knows what he's doing. They're waiting. They're waiting it out right now. So these other receivers get signed, especially Justin Jefferson, what that contract is going to look like. Um, we'll see. But, yeah, guys, other than that, that's pretty much it. I mean, we'll start our road to the draft streams tomorrow, so all of this stuff on the screen is gone. We've been dealing with this mess of a mess that we've been having. I didn't expect us to do this many moves. That's why I made the box a lot smaller. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, so we'll have some, we'll have some surprises this month. We'll have some things going on. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the stream up. You guys have a check the pin comment for the extra content every single day. Doesn't matter what you get. Um, you know, East Coast says Joey. Appreciate you reading my comments, man. Good luck to your. I have fun. You too, man. I hope you enjoy. I, I know you're gonna be doing. You're gonna be probably live streaming the, uh, the 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 draft and all that. So I hope I hope you're doing good. Appreciate you coming in. East Coast knows a lot about the draft, knows a lot about these players, and the much respect to him that does a lot of his homework has been doing it for a long time. So much respect to him, man. Um, other than that, that's it. So I'll be back tomorrow. I'll have a video out. A couple. I'll have two membership videos out tomorrow because I didn't have one today. So uh, you'll be rewarded two instead of one. Um, I'll see you guys later. All right, you guys, enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys in the next one. Shakespeare, Falsa. Peace out, guys. Peace out.